hey guys welcome to ss unitech susil this side and today we are going to see about the copy activity so what is the copy activity and where we can use it so go to the next slide and we'll try to understand about the copy data activity so what is copy activity so the copy activity you can use to copy data among data store located in the on premises and in the cloud so we can move the data from one location to another location and location could be on prem or the cloud so after you can copy the data you can also use the other activities for the further transformation and analyze it so this is the main use of the copy activity it is very important and very often to use inside the azure data factory so before going to start with the copy activity with the practical demo first i would suggest go and try to visit this link i'll provide this link in the description of this video so you can directly go and try to check this link let me quickly go through about this link so basically in this link you can see the supported data store and formats so what it mean so if we are going to use the copy activity so inside the copy activity we are having the data store so data is stored on which location that we can see right here so for example in the first case the data is stored in the azure blob storage so the azure blob storage can be used as a source as a sync and supported by azure ir i did not discuss at yet about the azure ir and self hosted ir that we will be going to see in the upcoming videos as of now you can understand only azure blob storage can be used for all the levels next we can scroll in the down side then here we can see the azure database for the maria db so on that case it cannot be used as a sync we can only use as a source and ir level go to the down side so here we have the databases so inside the databases as we could see scroll down little bit so in the db2 it is not supported for the sync as well and again we can see the hive so it is also not going to support as a sync so in case of the mysql it is also not supported as a sync location but for the oracle and here we have the sql server somewhere so on those cases all four options is available so we can use as a source and as a sync this list is going to modify day by day so once you are going to implement the copy activity i would suggest go and try to check about this now let's try to understand about the requirement so go to on the sql server so as per our requirement as we have already seen in the previous video so we are having two tables the first table is the source that is employee and second is the destination table with the same data structure so we want to load the data from this source to the sync that is the destination one and this is our requirement so go to on the browser and we'll try to understand how we can design the pipeline here and first i want to create a new pipeline so we can directly click on these three dot and click on the new pipeline and we can call this pipeline as the copy details because we are going to see in the detail about the copy activity so for using the copy activity we have to either we can search in this or we can see inside the move and transform with the copy data so we can drag and drop that now here we can see the name so we can rename this like it is going to load the data from employee to employee destination so we can rename as per our requirement next we can check the properties that we are having here so we can also define the description what this copy activity will do next we can see the timeout so the timeout which is we can see the seven days so if your copy activity will be going to execute till seven days then this will be failed so we can also reduce this timeout option from here so by default it is seven days we can also reduce that next we can see the retry if your copy activity got failed on that case do you want to retry and how many number of times we want to retry so that is zero by default and we can set like if you want to check if this copy data activity will fail two times we want to execute so we can set this retry value as two after that we can see the retry interval 
so for example if failure is occurred and we want to start the execution again then the bit whatever the difference between failure and next start that we can define here then we can see the secure output and secure input so we can leave that these two options next we can go inside the source so now we have already created the data set so if you haven't watched the previous videos of this video series so i would strongly recommend to go and watch the previous video i'll provide the link as well in the description so where we have created the data, data set so i am going to use the same data set so this is for the employee source we can select it now here we can see the option for the use query or store procedure so from which we want to get the data so as of now we are getting the data from table so that's why the first option is selected if we want to get the data from query then we have to select the second option and we need to define the query right here in case of the store procedure if we are getting the data from the store procedure then we can select the third option but here we are getting the data directly from table so the first option is okay now here we can see the query timeout so it is set is 120 so 120 minute after it will be filled so this is the timeout option so we can leave that next is the isolation level so we are not going to set any isolation level and here we can see all the isolation levels those are available inside the sql server we can see it here like read committed read uncommitted repeatable reads reliable and snapshot so we are not going to set any isolation level we can make it as none after that we can see the partition option so if we can click in this information then it will have the learn more option so we can go and check the learn more but the partition option we are not going to select this so we can make it as none if we want to do the physical partitioning of the table then we can select the second option if we want to select the dynamic range then we can select and here we can see the column names so by the dynamic range we can select all those columns and the upper bound and the lower bound values for those so i'm not going to do anything on the partition so we can make it as none now let me go inside the sync so inside the sync again we had created one more data set for the sync so let me try to select that so that is okay so here we can see the second option that is the right behavior so whether we want to up insert or the insert and third is the store procedure so by using any store procedure we are going to insert the value so we can do that from here so that is not required we can directly insert by using the table so we can select the first option directly after that the second option that we can see the bulk insert table lock so while we are going to do the bulk insert so do you want to apply the lock in the table or not so that option we can set yes or no from here so by default it's no after that we can see the table option so here none and second auto create the table so if table is not there in your db and we want to create that table as runtime so we can select the second option otherwise we can choose the first option so by default is none so your table should be available in the destination now here we can see the pre copy script so this is very important you need to more focus on this one so if you want to execute anything any query before inserting the data in your destination then that query should be available here so in our case we want to truncate the table if any data is available in the table so we want to truncate in the destination so we have the employee destination table so let me write the employee destination so before going to inserting the data in this table it will be going to truncate first and after that it will be inserting the data in the table next we can see the right batch timeout so here we can set the value or we can leave this as it is after that we can set the batch size or maximum concurrent connections everything we can set it here so in the real time we are not going to more concern about all these now go to the mapping one and this is very important the mapping one is very important so let me try to import the schemas so here if your source table and the destination table is not having the same columns on that case we can do the mapping here inside the mapping 
so here is the source we can see the employee id and we have the employee name so that is okay if we can see in the destination side so we have the employee id and employee name so everything is map matching so that's why we can see it here and if you want to delete any column mapping so we can see here plus symbol and this delete button so we can click on the delete and that mapping will gone and data will be inserting only the mapping column that we have so that we will see later in this video don't worry for that so go to the setting tab so here inside the setting tab it will be more focused about what over the consumption that will be having and what will be the cost that we need to spend for loading the data so that we can see it here so we can leave that as well go to the user property so inside the user property if we want to add any new user property so that we can add so i'll make a separate video for the user property in this video leave this as it is now let me try to uh, save this now let me try to debug this so we can click on this debug so this pipeline will be executing it will take a little bit time so we can wait until this will not be executed successfully so it is executed successfully with 8 seconds only so now go to on the sql server and in the destination let me try to refresh this table so this table should have the four rows as we have already seen in the source that we can see so this is the destination and this is the source so both are same so now what next we want to do let me try to click this and go to the mapping and this time i just want to delete one of the mapping with the employee name now let me save this and once i'll be executing this package again so first data will be truncating in our destination table and loading the data only for the employee id column so let me try to execute it so it is executed successfully now let me go and try to check in the table so let me try to refresh this so your employee name column will have the null values so as you can see employee name does not have any value and employee id is only having the value so this is just because of your mapping that we have deleted let me try to import it again so by mistake if you have deleted then you can import it again and you will be going to have all those mappings there so we have discussed about the copy data activity in the next video we'll be going to see about the user property and then after we'll be also going to see about the monitor so inside the monitor tab we can see so all the package which are executing that we can see the details here so that we'll be going to see in upcoming videos so thank you so much for watching this video if you really like this video please subscribe our channel to get many more videos don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our newly uploaded videos see you in the ne next video